Hi, I'm JP and you're watching The Coffee Channel. And today we're delving again into the world of TV and film and how coffee is depicted in it. And in this case, we're looking at James Bond. More specifically, Live and Let Die. Now, coffee is only really mentioned in the books very briefly in From Russia With Love. And Bond is kind of a bit of a, a proto-hipster in how he drinks his coffee. He uses a Chemex, which would have been an extremely rare thing back in the 50s. It had only been invented in the 40s. And he drinks his coffee black and with no sugar. A Chemex, you just wouldn't find them in your normal household in the 50s. So it's kind of showing Bond as a man of taste, a man who liked the finer things in life, which is strange when you see this clip from Live and Let Die, 1973 film, first film featuring Roger Moore. Now, it's the very start of the film. The credits have been Bond is in bed with an Italian agent and M turns up at his door. Let's have a look. Bond lets him in and we see a very 1970s kitchen. Now, what we see in the centre of this kitchen is a rather strange and very 70s looking grinder. Now, I haven't actually been able to find out what this grinder is. I've searched everywhere on the internet and it's very difficult to find one that looks exactly like it. It looks to me a bit like a Mazza, uh, but it could also be an Amphim as well. It's probably an Italian one, but it, it may be one of those strange Italian brands like La Cimbali or something like that, where an espresso machine maker actually made a grinder via another company like Mazza. It doesn't quite look like a Mazza. It's the right colour for a 70s Mazza, but the hopper's the wrong shape and it's a bit too blocky. But anyway, there's nothing on the internet that indicates what this grinder actually is. If anyone knows, drop me a line in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know. So Bond has got a pretty nice grinder for the time. And as we look a bit further, we'll see that he actually has an espresso machine. And the espresso machine in question is a La Pavoni Euro Piccola. Now, this is something that was very cool back in those days to have something like this, a lever espresso machine. It's a single boiler one. So that boiler there where Bond is standing next to it, standing still, it's going to be extremely hot. Like he is not going to want to touch that with his silk bathrobes on. That is going to be at over 100 degrees. It's a bit of a finickety thing. You can still buy these now. They're about six or 700 pounds. They're a very finickety thing because they're not like a normal lever machine where the spring provides the pressure and pulling it down just does the pre-infusion. You actually provide the pressure by pulling it down yourself. So any inconsistency in that is going to really mess up your coffee. And as you'll see now, Bond is not an expert at making coffee. In fact, he's pretty terrible at making coffee, which is really strange because this period of Bond is what Roger Moore calls the genius of Bond. Normally, in any circumstance in a Roger Moore film, Bond will know absolutely anything. He'll be able to fly a plane. He'll know about nuclear physics. He'll know about quantum theory. Yet, no one, and this includes the director or any of the people involved in the studio, have actually seemed to have told Roger Moore how to use an espresso machine. Because, let's take a look at the next bit. So, he, he struggles with getting the porter filter into the group heads like he's never used an espresso machine before, which is fair enough. Most people struggle first time, but you think they might have given him a bit of a bit of practice with it, or maybe they just filmed it. They said, here you go, more, take the take the porter filter. This is, just stick it in like that. And he's sort of struggling with it. So they cut away from him as if they never quite got that bit right and couldn't be bothered to do a second take. Then we'll watch a bit more. And he's obviously started to extract the coffee now. Now, looking at this, it looks absolutely terrible. It's really thin, watery coffee. It doesn't look at all like espresso. I don't know what he's done. It, maybe it's not even coffee in there. Films are really weird in this way. They don't always use the things that you expect them to use. But he's making what looks like a very, very terrible lungo. He looks like he's put like three grams of coffee in and sort of 35 grams of water. It's, it's, it's really bizarre. It's a really bizarre espresso. Not as bizarre as what happens next, though. Go a bit further. Here we go. And then what does he do? He pours some cold milk into the coffee cup. Like, what are you doing, Bond? Literally, what are you doing? Like, you're going to have an espresso with cold coffee, with cold milk? It's just going to be freezing cold. But no, no, he's not going to do that. What he's actually going to do 
is he's going to steam the coffee and milk together in the coffee cup. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that. The nearest thing I've ever seen to that is in the early days of soy milk, when there wasn't a barista edition of soy milk, what you used to do to stop the milk from separating when it was added to the espresso was to mix the espresso and the milk together in a jug and then steam it all together. And that used to help. But that was in a jug. That wasn't in a, a weird little coffee cup. As you look, he's also spilt coffee all over the saucer. So he does this. Then he hands it to M. He hands M a saucer that's covered in milk that he spilt. Um, and then this terrible concoction that I, I just don't know. I just don't know what it is. It's just this bizarre drink that he's probably just like, it's like a heated up instant coffee almost. It's almost like he's, it looks like an instant coffee that's been, had some milk added to it and then steamed on the steamer. It, it's really bizarre. It totally, totally goes against everything Bond stands for. Normally he wants the finest things in life. You know, in the books, he's got a Chemex. He drinks Blue Mountain coffee, which at the time would, actually be probably quite good these days it's, it's it's an irrelevancy back in the 50s it's probably about some of the best coffee you could actually get but bond has this really nice grinder really nice espresso machine for the time and it's like he doesn't know how to use it it's like he hasn't read the instructions or no one's told him how to use it it's really bizarre so a bit of a fail there unfortunately roger i think you could do better than this maybe we'll see espresso in a future bond film or maybe Maybe it'll be like a hipster thing. Maybe he'll make himself a Chemex with a pour over and uh, like a Hario uh, gooseneck kettle. That, that, would, that would actually be quite cool if, it, if, it, if a little bit affected. One thing we should mention here is Bond has got a very, very 70s kitchen. I, I actually think it's quite cool. There's a lot of copper going on. There's a waffle maker in there, bizarrely enough. I, I can't really imagine Bond making waffles, but hey-ho, maybe they thought he did in the 70s. So there you go. Have you seen Bond make coffee in any other films? I haven't, but if you found any other examples of coffee in films, let me know. Let us know in the comments below. Drop us a line. Like and subscribe. See you next time.